The regrets are that it was a segregated air force and that my ambitions to really do some serious flying uh, were thwarted by the fact that there were so many limited spaces, whereas white pilots trained in my time had the entire United States and overseas to be assigned to. Black achievement in aviation has been a slow and painful progress. During the first 50 years of powered flight, Afro-Americans flew mostly under segregated circumstances. To make the public more aware of the black achievements in aviation from World War I through the space shuttle missions, an exhibit of those accomplishments is installed at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. In December of 1983, a touring exhibit of those achievements appeared at the Buffalo and Erie County Historical Society. We learned that Eugene Bullard of Georgia was the world's first black combat pilot joining the French Foreign Legion and flying combat missions over the Western Front in 1917 during World War I. Then there was Bessie Coleman, the first American to earn a pilot's license in 1922. She was a barnstormer and stunt pilot. However, both pioneer aviators were forced to train in France because of their race. The culmination in the struggle of black Americans gaining recognition for excellence in aviation came shortly after 2 a.m. on August 30th, 1983, when Lieutenant Colonel Guion Bluford, Jr. became the first black astronaut to be blasted into space aboard the Space Shuttle Challenger. It all began on March 7th, 1942, when America's first black pilot started training at the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. That year, 25 cadets earned their wings and formed the 99th Fighter Squadron, flying P-40 pursuit planes made here in Buffalo by Curtis Wright. The squadron downed 16 enemy aircraft and was cited for meritorious service in the Allied invasion of Sicily and Italy. Switching to P-51 Mustangs, the 99th then joined the 332nd Fighter Group in Italy and flew over 15,000 sorties, destroying more than 250 enemy aircraft. They won the Distinguished Unit Citation in March 1945 for extraordinary heroism in a bomber escort mission over Berlin. And many of those veterans who sprouted wings at Tuskegee are from Buffalo and western New York. Joining them was Theodore Robinson of the Federal Aviation Administration, also an alumnus from Tuskegee, who remembered the struggle for equal recognition. Were the requirements more stringent for you? Well, we understand that it was. When you consider the fact that there were only uh, something less than a thousand black pilots trained during World War II, and there were, you know, millions of white pilots trained, uh, that uh, they really, evidently had some fairly high standards. We thought that they did. Uh, we understand that uh, from some of the work and research that's been done by people like Colonel Alan Groppen, who wrote the Air Force Integrates, that uh, because of the, the limited number of blacks who could be accommodated in the Army Air Corps, the standards were kept high. We also suspected that there was something like a quota system. I learned later on that what we suspected was actually true. We were washed out for the, the slightest of misfraction. And as a consequence, uh, I believe it was extremely stringent, much more stringent for us than it was for our white counterparts. You had to be the top or not at all. They washed out numerous black uh, cadets who were better pilots than a lot of the white guys that were going through in neighboring airfields down in the south during the war time. The morale was, wasn't the best in the, in the, you know, as you would expect, because I know a lot of the, lot of the flying officers were uh, a little unhappy with the setup before as the officers' clubs and the uh, privileges they can go into town and things like that. We had uh, good morale in the barracks. The barracks were equivalent to what most of the bases had. Of course, you must remember that we, when we went in, we were in a segregated uh, setup and uh, it was strictly all, strictly set up, colored set up all the way through. It must make you very proud to see how far the black uh, aviators have come when you saw that man open that space lab. Yes, I am very proud. 
and I hope that all Americans can share my sense of pride for the accomplishments of a person like Dion Bluford and some of the other astronauts. Of course, I was proud when the first white astronauts went aloft. You know, I share the sense of uh, belonging to them, but at the same time, I was aware of the kind of separation that had been imposed on us as blacks, and it's just uh, good that finally, after so many years, uh, the uh, National Aeronautics and Space Administration uh, and the U.S. government finally decided to include blacks in a meaningful way in the space program. Of course, there were lots of other people, not only pilots, but there were many, many other persons who were in supporting units. And without all of us, none of us would have flown. We paved the way for him, and I believe he realizes that too. You more or less were a pioneer and what we're seeing today with the first black astronaut up there, yeah. you helped make it possible. That should give you some pride. This is true, this is true. But it's, why does it take so long? Color, creed, and ethnic background are no longer legal obstacles to any goal to which you may aspire. Individual excellence is the only part that amounts to anything. When the Tuskegee flying program was offered to America's black youngsters, we were ready. We had prepared ourselves for this opportunity, and when it presented itself, we grabbed it with both hands. Prepare yourself so that when your Tuskegee appears, you will be ready.